Hi, this is Dr. Rajesh Khanna. You guys call me II Doc, and I'm going to talk to you about the various steps in the procedure we have termed presbyopic implant in eye or pie. So this is the first step, making a wound to enter into the eye. So this has to be constructed very carefully so our instruments can go in, but at the end there should be no leak, that is fluid should not leak out, or nor should bugs go in. So this one we just made a paracentesis, and we will make one more paracentesis. The difference between the main wound and paracentesis is main wound is 2.2 millimeter. Now we are going to put the specially crafted drops. These are the magic drops which numb the eye from inside and made up of phenylephrine and uh, xylocaine, lidocaine preservative free. Now we put in some jelly. Uh, which will coat the endothelium and prevent any trauma to it during the surgery. This is followed by an, uh, an optic zone marker where I'm centering on the line of sight by asking the patient to look at the three lights from the microscope. This is going to play a very important role for two reasons. One is in the capsular axis, which we are going to begin now, and then towards the end when we are centering the lens exactly towards the line of sight. So this is the initial opening made with the cystitome, not with a 400,000 laser, but with a 20 cent needle crafted specially. This is a, a robotic mic, uh, micro forceps called capsular axis forceps, which is going to make a circum, uh, circumferential opening in the natural lens. The, uh, this again, as you see, is a piece of R and the size has to be very well controlled and for which we had made use the OC marker which was around 6 5.7 millimeter so we keep within it and get a very good rexis and then we remove the capsule anterior capsule even if we don't remove it comes out when the jelly comes out and when we go in and remove the lens fibers Till now the light patient can see and I keep it very low lights not to bother them. Now we use BSS fluid waves to separate the natural lens capsule from the cortical material. And this is a very important point. What we are doing is rotating the lens from the capsular bag and separating it. A lot of people call presbyopic implant in eye as lens exchange. This point shows it's not true. We are separating the covering of the, the entire lens from its contents and we are only going to remove the contents, not the entire lens. Um, this is the FACO machine which uses sound waves. That's it, sound waves to dissolve the natural lens and aspiration to suck it out. That's why we are able to do it all through a small wound, less than an inch. and. We spend enough time to do things carefully as the patient is awake, monitoring them, making sure they're not having pain. And I talk to the patients, I tell them what I'm doing. And as when the lights will be bright, when I need their help and when I don't. Now I'm waiting to put in the second instrument because that takes the control of the eye in my hand. Because when only one instrument is there, patient can still move their eyes around. But with two instruments, it becomes more steady. And I uh, removing the central core of the nucleus uh, of the lens first. This is the hardest part, uh, like the most firm. Uh, and so it, it's better to remove it in centrally and go deep. So to keep away from the cornea and away from the lens capsule. Now, we bring in the second instrument and this is a variation because believe it or not sometimes we have to adjust according to the instruments available and this time I remember one of the sterilizers broke down and so our regular Nagahara chopper or Cybel choppers were not available so we started with the uh, sweeper that instrument, believe it or not, we just call it sweeper to move the lens around and provide stability. But then, hey, we discovered that it's ready. And this is the Cybel chopper. So very carefully, we are putting it through the anterior cortical layers and 
the lens and the right hand which has the phaco provides the vacuum to stabilize the lens and left eye hand goes from periphery to center and splits the lens. Now that we have split the lens into pieces, just like pizza pie, the more pieces you uh, split, the easier, the smaller they are to grasp and take them out. The less energy we put into the eye, the more comfortable it is for the patient and for the eye. That translates to quicker healing. So, but we have to all times be careful not to injure the posterior capsule. That means the capsule behind the natural lens. And that's again making a point. If you do the whole lens exchange, you're damaging everything and then your presbyopic implant will have not a place to sit in. That's why this procedure is called presbyopic implant in eye and not clear lens exchange, not refractive lens exchange. We are not exchanging the entire lens, just eliminating the contents. So, and we have different settings. Now we've got an, gone on epinucleus setting, uh, which removes the uh, thinner epinucleus. Now some fibers are left and we, we feel it's safer to remove this with just cortical aspiration where there's no phaco involved. The reason we don't want phaco because it can hit the posterior capsule. Uh, I like to hydrate the paracentesis wounds at this time so to keep the chamber well formed. And now we are going to go with the special instrument I use. It's called a transformer because it can transform from one-handed like we are beginning now uh, and also go to two-handed. An air bubble sneaked in but we've got rid of it. Now we've converted it to, to two-handed to remove the air bubble and uh, allow us to reach places which one-handed can't. So as previously I start, had started like two decades ago with one-handed then switched to only two-handed and each one had its own benefits and advantages but the transformer for last five years I've been using has been godsend because it kind of gives me the benefits of both techniques so I can reach anywhere in the eye without enlarging the wounds so um, this used to be the traditionally difficult area to reach under our handpiece and we can reach from left side and having it one-handed uh, or by um, the irrigation flow from the bigger port allows the eye and the capsular bag to remain well formed so we don't grab it by mis mistake the tips are also very special they are a special uh, polyamide, so they are less prone to, one, grab the capsules. They are very smooth polished, so they don't injure, and believe it or not, they are disposable. Now, as you see, there's a leak from the side wound, so I'm using just a cut wax cell to hydrate the wound, so we can keep the chamber well formed, the capsular well, bag well formed, so we can grab just the cortex and not the anterior capsule which will tear it up. Uh, speed is good but that should not be the, our only motivation um, because this is for lifetime we are doing and an extra minute or two spend achieving perfection is what I believe in and I'm sure if you're a patient you'll want perfection than a Olympic race to the finish which we know is coming to Tokyo this year. So when we do the soft lenses for presbyopic implants unlike old people's cataracts the fibers are usually very sticky and they take more time to come out. So as you had seen the central part was very easy to do with FACO but these ones uh, end up sticking and some we have to use judiciously so I'm going to use a technique I learned from my mentor Dr. Schneider out of Cincinnati around 25 years ago where I'm going to use the implant itself to free the last fibers. So this will go out of view because uh, the lens, big lens is going through a small wound and it's called uh, patient assisted delivery because I'm asking the patient to look towards me when I'm putting the implant. Now the implant is in, I'm putting a little viscoelastic to push it down and now I'm going to be rotating it. The rotating motion is going to scrape against the capsules 
uh, without and liberate the cortical fibers without damaging the capsule. So as you had seen, we had folded the lens input. So we have to wait for the arms known as the haptics to open up. So it's like the wings of the bird, the, they open up and we are using those wings to move the cortex. As you can see, the cortex has got freed now. And even if it hadn't got freed, we can go from the side port and remove it. You might ask why we are removing it after putting in the lens than before. Because the lens acts like a tamponade against the posterior capsule. So there's less chance or very little chance of damaging the posterior capsule when the lens is in. So we can't grab it and we can be a little bit more aggressive. As you can see, this is a multifocal presbyopic implant. We can see the rings on it, even though they're not traditional rings, but height modifications. You can see the capsular outline of the anterior capsule. We're removing all the jelly because if we leave the jelly behind, it's going to block the drainage uh, pathways and cause high pressure spike. At the end of the case, what we like to see, I like to even uh, touch it with my finger. Oh, this is an important part. Uh, this, since this is a toric presbyopic implant, we are making sure it's aligned along our predetermined axis, which in this case is around 180 degrees. So I was saying, how should the eye be in the end? The pupil should be round. The optic zone we had determined in the beginning, the lens should be well centered. And again, we ask the patient to look at the light. So the light, center of light is right in the center of the lens. Hydrating all the wounds. Make sure there's no jelly in the eye. The pressure is good. It's not too soft. The chamber shouldn't collapse. The wound shouldn't leak. And we are just testing the wounds, making sure they're not leaking. And also with my finger, I can palpate and see the pressure. Because, you know, 25, 27 years ago when we started, that's how we learned we didn't have all the sophisticated instruments but that has come to play an advantage today so we like to leave the pressure around 20 25 or 15 somewhere in there we don't want the pressure too low because then wound uh, will allow fluid from outside to go in in the end we put in intra cameral antibiotics that was what you saw just go in and now the procedure is over and we're all done